Barrow notes. Barrow notes. What is it? Garbage or writing? Oh, narrow boat wheel. Had a cup of tea. Let's go see that church. I think there's a pub called the Big Dick. Big Dick Inn, I think it's called. Is it a big cock? A quick look. Wait a minute. Oh, it's just the cock in. It's the cock in. <laughs> oh, grow up, Will. Grow up. No. Just over there is the great. Is the River Ooze. We're almost at the end anyway, just up there. Let's go and have a look over this little bridgey, shall we? This is the uh, River Ooze. Travelling at some pace, that is. Let's go out with the tide. I'm going with the tide. It's a quick river. And there's the, just over there you can see. The, uh, the little ooze where I'm on. Little ooze? Oh, I think it is. I can't remember. We're up, nip over here for a lunch and then and a pint if you're that way inclined and nip back. Beautiful little spot, isn't it? Hey? More up for a bit. This is the old church down there. Look, I want to go visit that one as well. Lovely. Willow. Hey, a lot. This is the uh, Wiggle, Wigan Hall, St Mary's Magdalen. Wigan Hall, St Mary's Magdalen. It's a beautiful scene, isn't it? That willow, the blue skies. Wow. Beautiful place. Oh, I keep looking at churches, not religious. No, but I love the uh, architecture. It was 1816 he died September the 17th 1816 there's a lot of stones are just crumbled away rectory there a lot rectory beautiful old buildings aren't they I love these kind of places hey, it's quarter to 11 oh hello thank you quarter to 11 bang on Elizabeth, the beloved wife of John Hall, who died April 3rd, 1859, aged 36, bless her heart. So I could say this church is probably 70, late 1700s, I'd imagine. Everyone's going off to the holidays, look, and I'm here. I'm stuck here in this dump of a country. Oh, hey. Eh? What I won't give to go to Spain. I'm joking. I love this country to bits. Look at those gorgeous little doors there, Lord. That lead you out onto the roof. It's like the old days in the barbecues, I suppose. Hey, eh? Old slate roofs. The weather vane on the roof. Beautiful. We're swinging off the bridge there, Lord. It's like a load of fun, to be honest. It's very hot. It's very windy now, the wind's just picked up. So they're swinging. I'm getting caught in the wind. It's all good. Now we're heading that way to the church. I'm heading this way down to the, uh, down to the church. Just a short walk down there, about a mile. Mile and a half, maybe. You can see why that uh, we were going so violently left and right, can't you? It's now obvious, and when the when the water's down, but not so obvious when you're going along, is it? Wow. You can 
see the ooze in the relief channel and the church is situated right in between. As you can see it's an imposing building, uh, the walls, the roofs have gone and the windows have gone but the bell tower is still intact and there's a little staircase leading you up. We can't go in there, but it's gated but there's a, there is still a, still a tower intact inside. I don't know how you get down there. I'm going to walk all around, have I? I hope not. How does one get down? I can't go that way, somebody's garden. I can't go that way, it's somebody's garden. So I could sneak in there, because I'm going to piss. Could I? There's a path here. That was fantastic, I was going to see it. The tower dates from the 13th century. Most of the present day church was built around 200 years later and the brick buttresses and south porch about a century after that. To the south are the last remains of an arcade which was once an aisle and although that's long lost there's still plenty here to enjoy. Cracking little place to visit isn't it? When a relief channel was dug for the river, a great ooze in the 1950s, the church had been standing for at least 600 years, wow. But the new canal essentially cut it off from the village it served, and it was gradually abandoned and left to its fate, really. Shame, isn't it? Fabulous place. It's well, it's well worth the walk from the dick, or the cock, cock in. Oh, whatever. It's always a walk down the, down the towpath there. Brilliant. Really see why I was dodging so many corners, can't you look? And up here. Wow. That's why it was so left and right. Crikey. I think some child in the house here had uh, painted these stones. So I bought one for a fiver, put it under the bucket. On the walk back, there's quite a smelly section here. I think it might be serving the pump outs from further down the river, you know. It's a skip though, it takes rubbish out. Oh, that's very smelly. Not a nice thing to pass. All up and down this section uh, on the bridges you'll get kids you get kids jumping in and uh, they swim out and use the pontoons to climb out, so you just get you just get busy. So I prefer to go wild mooring, you know. Come on, mate, give it some. Let's see you jump in. I think, he, I think he does a belly flop. I'm sure he does. This is one for the lot. <laughs> he, was, he was fine, by the way. Uh, but they do get rowdy sometimes. They, they drink and, and come down to, to socialise on this pontoon, so be warned. I'm just going to go to the end and uh, turn around. So I can say I've been to the end then. Extremely windy now, it's just picked up. Uh, there's an unusual uh, statues in this garden. I thought they were real deer, to be honest. But they are, I think they were brass or no, bronze statues. I keep getting complaints about the wind. You've got to understand when I'm travelling along, right? I'm out in the wind and all weathers. So the sound quality goes up and down. I jump in on and off the boat. You know, I'm, I'm steering with one hand and filming with the other hand. You've got to understand this. Some people who complain, oh, they're too windy when they're complaining in the comments. <laughs> At the end of here, there is a speedboat club and there's also a sailing club. So I couldn't get to the very end. The, um, I think you can go up to the end in certain times, but this moment now this time now uh, the water skiers are out and all the markers are out and they're doing bits and bobs you can't go pottering up there on your narrowboat when there's water skiers flying around doing figure of eights and a bit further on from that there's a sailing club out as well so I thought oh, I'll just turn around and head back you know I've seen it I've seen this far there's not much to see now so let's go back beautiful evening for it cruising I might try and get back to the lock tonight, that's how I get on. Pontoons are fine, but they're just busy, busy and noisy, you know. I'm 
visible you are. Yeah, but when they're swearing outside your window, effing and blinding it, and things like that, it's not, uh, not something you want to hear, you know? Come out for the peace and quiet. sailing clubs back here again now I think it's a bit of a flow on I can feel it probably doing about I don't know four or five knots decided to moor here again Because the pontoons seem to be very, very busy. Oh, you're really miserable, you are. I can see the pontoon down there. There's loads of people on it, jumping in and jumping out. You can't beat this sound of nothingness in nature. You can't beat it. Mate! What do you think to all this heat? You're almost on the verge of taking your robe off. But you're used to the heat and temperatures where you come from. Okay. If it gets to 40 degrees, you'll take it off. Oh, I hope not, mate. It was 32 on my mattress last night. I've got a heat gun. The walls were 36 degrees. My walls inside the boat. Oh, soaked. I'm not talking about the sex life. I'm talking about sweating. Plonker. Thank you. Another beautiful night here. I'm just about to set off to get my van, which is Boston, and it's three or four bus rides in four, four and a half hours. Because you have to go, you have to go around the country like that, you know. So you've got one bus to here, one bus to there, one bus to there, one bus to there, or three buses, one bus to Boston. Let's see how we get on. The train, the train's cancelled. Right, back onto the buses. First bus ride was £3.50. Uh, it was the number 37 into Kings Lynn. Right, get a bus from Kings Lynn to Spalding now. It turned out to be really good value, to be honest. Three buses, it cost me about £10 something. All that way, I can't believe it. It's not hanging about, wow. Looking 70 mile an hour. <laughs> Bloody Nora. building. Wow. Pumping station or something. Chatterton Tower. Incredible. Lost fishermen in Boston. Oh, and there's the, there's the church. Pretty impressive, isn't it? We came down there. <laughs> we came down there. Look, it's crazy, isn't it? All the way down there. Wow. Because of Mr. Van, you see, I get to see, come back and see Boston again. Which is why I really enjoy uh, getting the van sometimes, you know. 
more adventure. Very impressive. A tower. Tower there, though. Wow. Crikey. It's now a calf. Hmm. Still making this kind of stuff, this workmanship. I'm not sure. Oh, look where then? Oh, books with peach. Oh, what have we got? I mean, a few years ago, you couldn't drag me inside a church, you know. But I find them fascinating. They're probably the oldest buildings in the country. Most of these churches, beautiful architecture and uh, woodwork, you know. Where that door goes there, oh. sneak in here and then sneak out, isn't it? These three women were, were burnt alive, and while they were burning, she gave birth. Oh my god, and they threw the baby back in. Ah, oh, such lovely people. Uh, do some wondrous things, don't we? There's a story there telling all about it, but it's just a long read. A lot of it's in Old English, Latin. There's a market town here, I think. There's a market going off. It's Boston. Mmm. Interesting little place, isn't it? journey and a half wasn't it? Three buses, uh, the first bus was £4.50, the second bus was three fifty, and the third one was three quid. And that's mad, a long hour and a half bus ride, 43 stops and it's one for three quid, wow. I've been around Boston, I've had a look at the uh, cathedral which I wanted to do. And uh, now it's time to get back. It's so hot. It is so hot. But my boat's hot. Let's get going. Well, at last I'm back. Three buses. One hour, ten minutes van ride. And a four mile bike ride. Oh God, it's so hot. Oh, why do you bother giving that van? I know. I know. It's when you need it, you really need it, you know. If you ain't got it, you can't use it, can you? Sort of thing, you know. But, uh, days like this, I really enjoyed it actually. I got to see Boston and I wouldn't have gone back otherwise. And I got to see the cycle route down here, which is absolutely atrocious. It's not a cycle route. And I got to see uh, Spalding and all that, you know. Albeit just a bus stop, but I got to see Spalding when I went out of there. Fabulous. Fish, you see them all? Little tap. I can hear it. See that? That's my wall. Oh my word, that's my wall. Wow, even the hot water that runs down was red hot. I mean, red hot as in hot water tank hot. So just be careful, don't you? I've been told with hoses as well. And if you hose, if you hose on the front and the sun's on it, and then you put the tap, put the tap onto it, and squirt the water on somebody, that, that water in that hose could be 100 degrees. You know, you have to flush it out first. And inside my little room, oh wow, oh, I'm absolutely soaked, absolutely soaked, below the water line, it's a bit cooler, wow, oh, dining area, 
35 degrees. Oh, that wall is so hot, blimey. Oh, crikey. I don't think like it. Look, I closed all the curtains, otherwise it would have been, it would have been twice that heat in here. I've opened the doors. I've opened the back doors and the front. You get a nice breeze coming through now to cool it all down. Oh my word. And not in a nice way. I don't know. I've just come back from that uh, cycling ride. Look at the state of me. Absolutely soaking wet. I don't normally show my uh, upper echelons off, but it's so hot, you know. So hot, Rippers. Dripping off me. <laughs> that button crikey. Another end to a wonderful day. Three bus rides, a cyclone ride, ending the day with a haircut. How wonderful. Got my push bike back, it's nice. You're better off while mooring here, much better. It's deep enough. The ground's the same height as the gunnels. Pontoons is just full of kids and people canoeing, jumping in and out, oh, it's on your nerves. Can't blame them, I mean, there's nowhere else, there's nowhere else to enter the water. You need to put, if you're going to swim in there, why don't you just make up a swimming pool? You know, put some, put a barrier in so people can swim safely and enter the water safely. So instead of Jumping off bridges and off pontoons, but it's hard to get out, you know. Another end to a wonderful day of moaning. It's that time of night when all these insects come on the roof. It sounds like rain, it's about quarter past eight. They start coming about dusk. They start to land on the roof. Just on this, just on that section there, not on the, any anywhere else on the narrow bow. It must be. Must be cool on there or something, or some moisture that they pick up, you know. And they just got a load on, they've just gone off now. <laughs> and I've talked. It's a beautiful, warm evening. Sitting here, chilling out, having a shower. Just relaxing, watching YouTube, answering comments, really. <laughs>